So when two threads try to update the same variable, the final value may go in an inconsistent state. We all know this, but why does that happen in this video? We'll go deep and understand why a really simple operation like count plus plus is not atomic in nature, why it is not thread safe, right? So to set a context, let's say I have a global variable called count. Count is set to, count is initially set to value zero. I have a function called increment, which increments it by one using the using plus plus operator. Now, when I have two threads, thread one and thread two, both are trying to, but both are invoking the same increment function, which is incrementing the value by one, I would expect the final value to be two. But it is possible that my final value is not two, but instead it is one. So we have just fired one operation, but it is still not atomic. Why is this happening? For us to understand this, it's important to go deep into the assembly language code and see what exactly is happening behind the scene, right? So for us to go deeper and understand why count plus plus is not thread safe, we would have to generate the machine language code or the machine code that is generated, also called as assembly code, which is generated out of our C code. Right? Now for us to do that, obviously we would have to do a bunch of setup locally, but instead I'm just trying to save some hustles and using an online ID called Replit. Replit is great where you can actually create projects in any language per se. Here I've just created a very simple Replit on which is using C as my language. I will just use this to do whatever operation that I would want to. So we'll start with writing this exact, this really simple code on include stdr.h int main int count equal to zero and oh sorry count equal to zero and i would do count plus plus simple code which just runs there's nothing fancy over here right so here what we have we are just having this variable called count which is a global variable and then i have a main function which is doing count plus plus now we, if we run this code, it would, it would not print anything anyway. But what we want to do is we are not interested in running this code. We are interested in seeing what happens when we do count plus plus. So we would want to generate the assembly language code out of this C code. How do we generate that? I don't know. So Replit gives you this very interesting thing called Ghostwriter. Replit folks have trained their own large language model on, which is very specific to programming and computer science and engineering related stuff and it gives really good answers for that so i'll go to plus type ghostwriter and i'll ask him how to generate machine or assembly language code from c using gcc and it did spit out that hey you have this file and the best part is it gave me in the context of my replit that because I created this replit called file called main.c, it gave me in context of this file that, hey, run this command, gcc hyphen capital S main.c. This will produce a file name main.s in the same directory as main.c, which contains a generated machine assembly code. So let's go to console and fire that. We see main.s got generated. Now we click that and to see what's there in main.s. Okay. This is the assembly language code that is generated out of this really simple C code that we wrote. Now, here there's a bunch of jargon which we typically don't really need to understand. The crux is we would want to know what's happening by when we do count plus plus. Count plus plus is part of main. We'll look at where the main definition is. This is where the main definition is. And then here is written, right? So this is the typical code that is executing within main as part of count plus plus. So here what we are doing, we have some move queue instruction, some addl, some xorl, some return. We could see count, we could see dollar one. Typically we are doing count plus plus, so adding one to that. And then we are doing xor of something and then returning. So these four instructions seems to be the one that is that will execute when we in, uh, execute the main function with count plus plus in it. So all the secrets and all the magic sorts should be within this. Right. When I ask Ghostwriter about, hey, what each of these lenders, it gives really beautiful output. I would highly recommend you to test that out. The best part being that it's very contextual on how this executes in context of your replit. It gives really amazing, uh, uh, it gives really amazing suggestions and descriptions about the things that you would want to know as an engineer. So pretty dope there. So here, 
let me walk you through on what of these commands that are generated that all of them are doing. We see these four commands getting generated is when I run count plus plus. So let's understand each of this command and what it's trying to do. The first thing, oh, basically FYI, uh, the machine language code that is generated depends on the underlying computer architecture that you have. This is as per the underlying architecture that Replit runs on. If you're using Ubuntu with AMD, you might see something like something else as an output, but the explanation would remain exactly the same. There's no hiccups here or there. Okay, so let's see the four commands that we saw on the Replit as an output, what they are doing. First is move queue, count at the rate, GOT, PCREL, percentage RIP, comma, percentage RX. Basically it says this, move queue is basically using the global offset table this got this got is basically the global offset table on from which we are reading count and loading it in rax rax is register ax right so it means that in this register ax load the address of variable count in that right it loading the address of count variable not the value of count variable add l dollar 1 percentage rx which means that whatever rx is pointing to add one at that location right so add one to the value pointed by addr pointed by the address stored in the rx register then xor percentage ex percentage ex when you xor same value with the same value the output is zero right so this is where we are doing zero and storing it in ex and then we are doing RET, return. If you look carefully, the return value of the main function is what? Zero, right? So that's why this is how it is returning zero from there. Okay, so now when we run these two things as two threads at the same time, what worse could happen? These instructions would interleave among themselves. So let's see if it leads to an inconsistent state. So what we know is we would need a register. Let's say I create this register called RAX. This is my register RAX and then what we want is we have a global variable called count that is stored over here. This is your count variable, right? Okay. So what we first did, first thread came in, it loaded RIP, which is an instruction pointer count global offset table and load the address of it in RAX. So now this RAX contains the address of my global variable count, right? Okay, this is my first thread. Then we say that this thread lets a context switched with another thread doing executing the same thing. What happens when we do a context switch of threads? So in as part of context switch, all the values of all the registers are stored in the thread state on the CPU. This way what happens is that when your CPU is doing context switch, it is taking all the thread state, which means all the values of register and storing it. So when you want to resume it, it just offloads all of those things on the register and now it can exactly start resume, uh, it would exactly resume from the point where it stopped. And right? this is typically what happens when you're doing thread, uh, when you're doing context switch between threads. So when the context switch happened, this Rx and this, uh, so basically Rx value got stored somewhere else. And then another thread got scheduled, which loaded its own Rx, like on the same register Rx, it loaded the variable, the address of C, uh, address of count, it did that, right? So they're not replacing each other's, they're kind of writing it there in their own Rx. So when the context switch happens, it stores. And then when it is scheduled again, it replaces the existing value that is there on the register, right? So both of them have loaded the address of count in their respective Rx. Then the next instruction is add L dollar one percentage Rx, which means whatever Rx is pointing to, go and increment it by one. Value of count was zero. Then add L dollar one percentage Rx would do what? It would increment whatever is pointed by Rx by one. So it did that, right? Then another thread came in, which ran add dollar one percentage Rx. Whatever is pointed by Rx, go to that location and do a plus plus. So given that even if the context which has happened, the value of count is not getting stored. It's not for each, uh, each thread the count is initialized. The count is global variable. So uh, the, the value stored in the Rx for thread two will be exactly the same. So it would go to that location and store this and like increment this and then XOR EX EX. It would XOR zero. Both of them would XOR zero and return. 
But if you look carefully, the final value, even after this heavy interleaving, is still correct. It's still true. So, so then why are we saying that count plus plus is not atomic? Which is where we made a big assumption that the assembly language code that is generated is atomic in nature, which means each of this instruction is atomic in nature. But that's not true because assembly language itself is an abstraction, which means that the commands, the assembly language that we are generating over here that we see, that we typically see is a human readable assembly language code, which is generated as part of GCC. GCC, after this assembly language code that we just saw, it uses assembler to, to actually create the machine level code, which is then executed on the underlying CPU, which is where the instruction like add L, which is for human readable, it makes it really simple that add this value to this register, like the address pointed by this register, but internally what is happening is this add L command that we have, this add L command actually splits into three micro operations. This one add L instruction that we see in the assembly language output is actually consisting of three micro operations where the first micro operation out of this three and these three micro operations that are executing on the CPU, they are atomic in nature. So move L, RDI, temp. So every thread has its own temporary set of registers when they're executing. So now what happens is they are assigned that register. So now they are loading the actual value of count from memory into this temporary, into this temporary register, then running add L on that one on that temporary register and then move L on that temporary register to percentage RDI. So writing it to that memory location. So this add L, that simplified output that we got in the assembly language is actually these three micro instructions. Now these three micro instructions on their own are atomic in nature. So a CPU would not context switch while executing move well, while executing add L, while executing move well. But it can context switch between these instructions. Which is where, this is where we say that they both loaded the old value then they incremented in their own space and then wrote it where this is where it comes from. Exactly. That's the reason why count plus plus is not atomic, but now you exactly know why that is happening. The temporary registers. So they read the value in the temporary register, even though you are not seeing it in the assembly code that is generated, but behind the scene, what is running, it is running in the micro operations. So those are atomic, but one adult instruction is not atomic in nature, which is that it's, it expands into three instructions, micro operations, as we may call it. And which is why your thread or your count plus plus is not atomic in nature. Now you see why this is where when people say that loading the value, updating it their own place and then writing it back, this is what is happening behind the scenes. Engineering is so beautiful. Computer architecture is so beautiful. And yeah, now you know, now you precisely know why count plus plus is not atomic in nature. This was my third video in the concurrency in depth series. I hope I sparked some engineering curiosity in you. Try this out. I have linked the replit, the GitHub repo where all these codes are pushed in the description down below. Do check that out. Do try this on your own. See what assembly language code your compiler generates for your computer architecture. You'll have quite fun implementing it. Just five lines of code, right? So yeah, that's all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amazing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.